Hey guys, welcome back to the Ultimate Beamer Experience. Today I've got another sort of a hidden gem modification for your E90. And as you guys know, I'm all about cheap performance upgrades. So far, all my videos have been kind of all about bang for your buck. Bang for your buck performance mods for the E90 platform. What if I told you for just $35, you can get more confident feeling shifts, less torque loss during hard throttle. Better noise feedback from the engine, producing an awesome cabin sound. Okay, so what if I told you that all that is possible just from upgrading your transmission mounts? Today what we are going to be talking about are polyurethane transmission mounts. Specifically, I will be reviewing the polyurethane transmission mounts from the company Condor. Speed shop. And I don't mean to sound like too much of a salesman because this video is not sponsored. I did reach out to them looking for a sponsorship. I told them, hey, look, it's Doug Demir. I'm trying to make a video about your products on my car. And uh, they said, yeah, I'd never heard of you, but we'll give you a slight discount. So this is what they look like right out of the package. They look pretty nice, well made, and it comes with everything that you need to install them. So let's just get into it. So you're gonna wanna jack your car up on all four corners, ideally. I'm using a hydraulic lift, uh, but this can easily be done on jack stands. I lifted my car using these jack pad adapters so I don't crush the plastic lift points to kind of prolong them a bit. And they worked perfectly, so if anyone is interested, I'll leave the link in the description below. After you have the car lifted in the air, you're gonna to wanna to remove the plastic under tray that's under the transmission, the second one. These are all eight millimeter screws. After you have that, you have access to the stock transmission mounts. You're gonna to wanna to remove the four 13 millimeter nuts on the top and bottom of the mount. And I know I'm probably gonna get some shit for this, but what I did was I took a block of wood and met it to my uh, four jack and I lifted the transmission just about an inch or so because that's really all you need. It may or may not put a little stress on the bell housing bolts, but I don't care. It wasn't a major concern to me, but if it is for you, you can remove this little transmission subframe that these transmission mounts are going through and you can do it that way. Whatever you feel more comfortable doing, go ahead. So after you either A, lift the transmission about an inch or two, or B, take off the little transmission subframe thing. You can now remove your stock transmission mounts. Now from here, what I did was simply align the bushing holes with the holes in the little subframe, and then I slowly lowered the transmission back onto them. And obviously, if you took off the little subframe, you're trying to accomplish the same thing. And once the holes are all lined up, you can take the included bolt and washer and thread it through everything. I put the bolt head on the top, just make sure that the washer is on top of the transmission, not underneath. Now you can put the washer on the other side and screw the nut in. Contrary to the stock transmission mount, with the bolt being separate from these bushings, you need to have a counter hold on the top to keep the bolts from spinning. So a 13 millimeter box wrench on the top and a ratchet on the bottom should do. Now you don't really have to crank these down all too far because it will compress the bushing. They really just kind of have to be snugged up to it. So I'd say give it the good old German guten tight. After that, just reinstall your plastic under tray and you're done. Super easy, super cheap. By the way, look how bendy the stock transmission mounts are. I can do it with the strength of my wrist. And that's my non-dominant hand too. the first drive with these condor um, bushings and let me tell you I didn't even consider this but it quite significantly in uh, increases your uh, what do they call it uh, volume and vibration or whatever it's called there's an acronym but it makes the fucking <laughs> N52 sound like a fucking muscle car because it's just the resonance through the chassis it's funny as shit. Like, just listen. I think it's hilarious. It sounds 
so deep, it's f hilarious. It sounds like I have an exhaust when I <laughs> when I don't. It makes this bitch freaking purr though. It's kind of cool. And I will say the throttle response is a little little quicker, a little bit, just because there's less um, things twisting on the drive line. But the shifts feel pretty, a little bit notchier. Well, not notchier, but like you know, firmer like you'd want and um yeah it's it's <laughs> the most noticeable difference is the sound 100 percent so i don't know if you'd want to do this on your daily driver i don't know but it's <laughs> it's funny all right guys that's pretty much all i have for this modification like i said the most noticeable difference is the sound and it sounds great but if you're looking for to keep your car quiet like for commuting it, you know it could some it could take some time getting used to it's not necessarily overbearing I also have my car stripped out but um, you know if you like being able to he really hear the engine this is great other than that uh, the shifts were you know s slightly improved the shifter feel on a manual and that's the main reason why I did this but I ended up liking the sound a lot but anyways thanks a lot for watching um, and subscribing I really appreciate it bye